Hi guys, this is gsnlon.com and I'm here with a handset called the Sony Xperia E4 G for an unboxing. You probably know that we're also testing the Sony Xperia E4 at the same time and this is a slightly upgraded version announced only a bit after the phone, uh, the E4. It was announced about one week or two later and it was launched in April 2015, so it's a fresh, fresh phone. Okay, so this is a test unit, don't expect that we've got uh, special accessories inside. We only got a few manuals, we don't have a charger, we don't have headphones. Once again a test unit but still good enough to figure out what's new compared to the E4. This is the Sony Xperia E4 G, it's part of the mid-range towards the lower end offering from Sony and uh, it's available right now in April 2015 and it gives an extra uh, design change or two, some specs have been changed and uh, it's... Um, slightly modified especially in the connectivity area as the name tells you since it's called the e4g it brings 4g lte connectivity the price tag at least in europe is 129 euros there are no accessories this is a test unit and the thickness is 10.8 millimeters the original e4 was 10.5 millimeters in thickness so this is actually a bit thicker however it's also lighter it weighs 135 grams the e4 weighed 144 grams let's turn it on and start the setup there's a trademark sony xperia button on the side volume button below and an interesting placement of the micro usb port on the side the display you can see here well um, it's actually smaller than the one of the E4. The E4 had a 5 inch screen, the E4G has a 4.7 inch display with the same resolution as the predecessor, 960 over 540 pixel. The panel you see here is an IPS LCD and inside the phone there has been a change. We got a quad core MediaTek MT6732 processor clocked at 1.5 GHz. The predecessor had another MediaTek, an older one, that didn't have support for LTE. This media MediaTek, the MT6732, was announced in February last year and it comes with LTE Category 4 support, which should be um, able to perform downloads of up to 150 Mbps. Okay, initial setup. From what I can hear from these initial effects, this phone has pretty good volume and I'm expecting some pretty good acoustics. On the software side we got Android 4.4.4, just like on the E4 model, and basically the changes here involve slight design tweaks, another processor and LTE. We have 1GB of RAM, just like on the E4, 8GB of storage, once again like on the E4, and the microSD card slot. The camera combo remains exactly the same, we got a 2 megapixel shooter at the front for selfies and we have a back 5 megapixel shooter with LED flash. Uh, there's GPS and FM radio but the texture has changed this time, it's a comfier texture, the E4 has a bit of a cheap plastic, this one feels almost rubberized. We got a 2300 mAh battery inside, a speaker right here and uh, a faster GPU in this case we got a Mali. T760 MP2, the E4 had a Mali 400 MP2. The build is also better, this model feels a bit solid and just like the E4, its um, back side of the case feels like a bumper around the body of the device. Okay, so better build, LT, another processor and that's basically the upgrades that the E4G, this one here, brings from the E4. As usual, I want to have a quick glance at the camera interface and camera features. Ok, so keep in mind the price, 129 euros, which is pretty affordable for a phone that has quite a few interesting options, such as manual and quite a few settings to play with here, ISO, HDR, metering, image stabilizer and a few more. You can even film in Full HD using this handset. This is only the unboxing, we don't have the official unit. So we're going to have to play with the phone, probably relying on the accessories that came with the E4. We're testing the E4 and the E4G at the same time, which is excellent in order to draw comparison between them, see what's new, what's better and what's worse between the two models. As far as I can tell so far, the E4G is more comfortable in the user's hand. And check this out, if you keep the on-off button pressed, you can take a screenshot, restart or activate the airplane mode. If I remember correctly, if I did the same thing on the E4, it allowed me the option to record 
well that's pretty much interesting since you can record video from the device this is gsnon.com this is the sony xperia e4g unboxed right here after the e4 we'll be back with reviews as soon as possible bye bye